The last thing we're going to talk about here in the series of videos is hooking up the limit switches. <clears throat> well, I guess we'll say homing slash limit switches, because that's really what we're using them for. So we're once again on the Lead Shine DM series stepper drive schematic, and we're going to hook up limit switches, limit slash home switches. And they're very simple. You just use a one of your inputs you hook up a normally closed switch and you run through from out of the input through the switch back down to 24 volt common now in this diagram it shows a separate switch for each axis you can hook that up that way <clears throat> in fact i'm going to be hooking it up that way but something that's been added to the centroid uh, software is the ability to hook all of your homing limit switches up on one input. So you can hook all your switches up in series, you know, very similar to how these optional switches are shown up here. You can hook them all up in series and use one input. And then the software, it just knows which axis it's moving. It only moves one axis at a time, and when it sees the signal, it knows it hits the switch. So using that would conserve inputs. I really don't need a lot of inputs, so I'm going to wire a separate switch, you know, a separate input for each switch. In my case, I'm actually going to use input 6 and 7 because it's uh, easier for me to get over to that side of the board rather than input 1, 2, 3, or 4, which is perfectly fine, and uh, you just configure that in the, the setup wizard. So... I can't show you the actual physical connections because I, uh, where I have my, my control box situated, I can't get in it right now. But it's very similar to everything else we've wired up. You literally come out of the input through the switch, come all the way back to common. So, there is the box. That's its new home. Makes a very nice shelf to put the tools on. Let's look at the wizard settings. So like I said, I'm using input 6 and input 7. Um, so input 6 is going to be first axis home limit OK. Input 7 is second axis home limit OK. These are both normally closed connections. And then when you go to axis configuration, now you can choose, you know, simple home is what you would pick if you do not have homing limit switches. Home to switch is what you will pick now that you have switches. So when you choose home to switch, the software is going to jog the axis until it hits the switch. Uh, homing direction, this is what's telling the software which direction to move the axis to search for the switch. Um, plus, 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 um, I'm not using axis three or four, so I have Positive for axis one, positive for axis two. And then homing sequence, uh, this gives you the order it's going to try to run in. So axis one is Z, axis two is X. So basically, um, I'm going to do X first and then Z. All right, well, let's give this a shot. Okay, so here's our CNC 12 software. I always like to hit reset just to Make sure that's all working. And it says press cycle start to send machine to home position. So I'm going to press cycle start. And what you'll see and now X is going to move. And I should have jogged it to get it a little closer. As you can see, it moves very slowly while it's searching for the limit switches. There it is. So X and Z have been homed. If you come over to the control and you press alternate D, it's alt D, you can toggle the machine position and you can see it's currently sitting at machine position X0Z0. So that's it. 
So we're good. Now we can home out our machine. And uh, we're pretty much ready to go. So that'll be it for this video. Um, I'm not sure, or this, this series of videos. I, I can't think of anything else I want to cover. I think I've covered all the basics. I hope you found this to be helpful. And uh, if you decide to build your own closed loop CNC control box, maybe some of this will work as a good reference for you. So once again, thanks for watching. Please be safe and take care.